Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for joining this day two of Cisco Live. We're so excited to have you here today. And thank you for joining the DevNet Lightning Talk session. So today we'll be talking about how to explore and visualize Yang models with Yang Suite. So before we get started, has anyone ever used Yang Suite before? I see a few hands. Okay, cool. So some people know what it is, but most of us haven't had the opportunity to use it yet. So let's start learning about what it is. But before we get started, hello everyone. My name is Story DeWeese. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Cisco Systems. So I work on the Catalyst 9000 or enterprise switching platforms, as well as programmability and automation for iOS XE. So let's go ahead and get started. You can join this WebEx space here to continue the conversation after this session, or maybe to ask questions if you want to chat more about Yang Suite or other programmability topics. Here is our agenda for today. So first, we're going to have an overview of an intro to programmability and automation and that life cycle with iOS XE. We'll then talk about Yang Suite and what it can be used for, why it's important. And next, we'll move into the Yang Suite 3.0 release. So recently, at the end of last year, we had an update to Yang Suite where we actually added a lot of new features. So we'll be covering those features today so you can better understand how to use and leverage Yang Suite. Then we'll wrap up with a brief demo of how this can work and then move into some resources about how you can continue on your programmability and automation journey. So to start off, here is the programmability and automation life cycle. So we talk about this in terms of four main days. First, we have our device onboarding. And please note, throughout this um, life cycle, we actually have programmability and automation features at every day in this life cycle. So the first one is onboarding, when you first get a device and plug it into your network. Next, we have device configuration. So that's where most of us sit for a lot of the time, right? We're trying to configure one device, or maybe we have a golden config on one device that we would like to apply to hundreds or thousands of other devices and make that process more efficient for us. Next, we have device monitoring. So this is how we can view telemetry data that's coming from our device and view trends over time. Lastly, we have our device optimization. So this is how we can take things one step further. And now let's dive into Yang Suite. So what is this tooling, first of all? Yang Suite can be used as a validation and testing environment. And it can help us construct Yang-based payloads to send to our devices. So again, this can be for configuring, or we can actually use Yang Suite as a telemetry collector or receiver. This can be used against any of the Yang APIs, including NetConf, RESTConf, GNMI, or gRPC. And this is generally available, and it's free for use. So you can download, install Yang Suite today, and start using it in your network. So here's a little bit of an intro into what's included in Yang Suite. And you can see we have core plugins and additional plugins. So for each Yang Suite release, we actually have a separate DevNet Snack Minute video. So you can go out and find this on YouTube if you want all the details from all the previous releases as well. But today, we'll be focused mainly on our uh, third version of Yang Suite that was released. So let's get started. What are some of these cool new features that you can start leveraging? So first of all, in terms of telemetry or data collection, we have had gRPC dial out for a while now. And now we're supporting TLS as well. So again, Yang Suite can be used as a telemetry collector or receiver for your data. So if you want to test out how to use telemetry before actually getting started, this is one way that you can do it. So specifically for the TLS portion, you can use this optional flag here to say, yes, I would like to use TLS. Here, then you'll have the opportunity to upload your keys and your certificates so that you can make this secure connection. Here you can define your receivers, and then you'll be able to select that, um, that device that you are wanting to use. And an additional feature here is we can actually have multiple receivers. So you can define this within Yang Suite as well. Once we go ahead and have everything set up, we can start to see the data. 
coming in. So in this use case, we're actually using CPU data every five seconds. So we're getting updates on this CPU data. We also have the option to view all of this data that we're streaming in in different formats. For example, we can look at the JSON logs. And this is really important for use cases where you want to take that telemetry data and do something with it. So for example, if you had a machine learning model that you wanted to use this data for, it's already in JSON format. So you can go ahead and make that next step to better understand your network trends. So when Yang Suite was first released, moving on to the next feature, we had a Docker container. So this is how you would use and access Yang Suite. That's still possible today. As well, you now have the opportunity to use pip install to actually get Yang Suite tooling on your device. You can check out the, read, uh, the GitHub readme for more details on how this works and all the prerequisites. At a high level, here are the steps that we have. So first of all, you can go to, again, the GitHub readme and look at all the prerequisites for the particular device uh, where you want to actually install Yang Suite. And once those are set up, you simply run pip install Yang Suite. It's that simple. And so we have a GIF demo here describing or showing how this can work on a Mac device. And then these next two steps, steps three and four, this is the same whether you're using a Docker container or pip install support. So in these next steps, you go through the installation process for Yang Suite, and then you can go ahead and start it up. Again, we have a GIF demo here in this slide, and I'll be sharing this out in our WebEx space for this particular session. So if you'd like to look at the details later, feel free to do that. But in the interest of time, I'll keep moving to the next feature. So next, we have our SNMP OID to Yang, uh, Yang model mapping. So let's take a step back. First of all, what are we talking about, and why is this important to you? How many people use SNMP today? Nice, I see quite a few of us do. Okay, and instead of SNMP, is there anyone who uses programmability primarily? Less hands, okay, less folks. So we're starting to see an overall trend where people are moving away from SNMP and starting to use programmable interfaces instead. And the reason why we're seeing this trend, we're actually doing some internal testing and we're finding that if you use programmable interfaces, if you use the Yang APIs, you can actually get much more data at a much quicker rate than if you were using SNMP. So we're continuing these tests today. That's why I don't have a big slide on all of the finalized numbers. But we're testing this both um, with single devices and with stacks as well. So Yang Suite can be used if you're interested in making this migration or you're interested in moving away from SNMP and to using Yang instead. So in this, you're able to see not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship between SNMP OIDs to Yang XPaths, but that's what we're trying to get to, to help understand, okay, which features can we use to get the same types of data. Next, we have our last feature in this version 3.0 of Yang Suite, which is using an Ansible integration. So once you use Yang Suite to actually build up a payload, maybe you want to configure your, advice to, your device to do something in particular, to go out and configure a feature. Now, not only can you use Yang Suite to directly push that payload to your device, but you can also generate either a Python script to do that same process or generate an Ansible playbook. And then you can run that immediately. So next, we can move into a demo here. So again, I have this GIF demo where we're actually going to use Ansible to do something super simple, which was we're going to edit our host name. So in Yang Suite, we're loading up our Yang set here, and we're actually identifying the Yang model that we want to use, which is our interfaces. So we're going to go ahead and load this and select that we want to edit or make a change to our device. We select the device we would like to use, find our host name, and here we can actually go ahead and change the host name to whatever name we would like it to be. 
Next, we can build up the payload here, and we can send this directly to our device, or we can download the Ansible playbook and generate it on the fly. So here, we can add in details about the name of the file and our Ansible tasks, or we can use the defaults that are already provided for us. So next, when we download this Ansible playbook, we can go ahead and look at our Ansible environment and set up configurations to see how this works. So this is the file that we just downloaded that Yang Suite generated for us. And we see up at the top, there's a lot of text, a lot of comments in green here. And this is telling us how we can use this file. The main thing is we need to change our host name or how we are actually accessing our device to make sure that this is the same as what we've provided in our Ansible config file. So once we run this Ansible playbook, or once we apply it, we can actually see some logs coming in from our device. So we see the login, and we're actually starting to see, OK, yes, the host name is being changed. So we'll see this at the, the end of the demo here. If we keep you know, moving down, we'll see, OK, now we have changed the host name on our device. And uh, we were able to successfully run and apply this Ansible playbook. So one thing to note here is changing a host name is not too crazy, right? It's not too big <laughs> of a task to do with Ansible or anything programmatically. But this is one example of how you can use Yang Suite and Ansible together to do much more complex things within your network. And it's really important when you have, say, a lot of things that you would like to configure all at once. You can have these in the same uh, Ansible file. So next, let's move on to some resources about how you can continue your education here. So here's a lot of resources about Yang Suite, including blogs and videos. Again, check out the DevNet Snack Minute videos that we have on YouTube as well as we have a um, WebEx space. So if you have any questions on how to use Yang Suite or if you're starting to use it and want some help and support, we're here for you. We've got your back. And I'll have a QR code on the next slide. So you can use this code to actually join in that WebEx space, that group, immediately. And also see questions from your peers as well about how people are using Yang Suite and what they can do with it. So again, here are a lot of resources about how you can use Yang Suite in particular. And next, I'm going to move on to some other sessions that we have coming up this week. So if you use the QR code here, it will lead you to a blog where we have all of our sessions that are happening at Cisco Live this week about programmability, about automation, and about telemetry. Now, this blog also has links to all of our on-demand sessions from lots of previous Cisco Lives dating back to 2019. Next, I encourage you to complete your session survey. And here's how you can continue your education here at Cisco Live this week. Now, with that, I would like to say thank you for your time. And I'm excited to see how you can use Yang Suite in the future. If you have any questions, please feel free to come up to me and ask them afterwards. Thank you.